What's up everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to complete our quest for stage two on the Golf R. Our full stage two build has included the downpipe, the charge cooler, an intake. We did stage one software on the ECM and on the TCM. Now we have to complete this package with our turbo inlet pipe and our stage two software. If you haven't seen the other videos on installing the downpipe and the charge cooler, I'll be sure to link that up so you guys can check that out. I am super jazzed about this, and out of all the things we've installed uh, for Stage 2, this should be the easiest. This is also the one, if you guys are only going to do one mod and not go full Stage 2, this is probably the guy that I would put on. I think this has been the one to show the best horsepower gain without doing everything, right? The way to really see the full benefit of all these components is you got to do them all and you got to do the software. Yes, you can just do the downpipe. Yes, you can just do the charge cooler. Yes, you can just do this inlet pipe. Yes, you can do a turbo muffler delete if you want to do that, or an air intake, but to really capitalize on each one of those components, got to have the software to match it too. In order to install this turbo inlet pipe, we're going to be working at the back of the engine, and it's located right down here, right at the turbocharger. This job is pretty straightforward and doesn't require really any tools other than a couple of hand tools. There is one place where it might get a little weird, and that's the fitting for the PCV valve right behind this sensor. Those can be tricky to get off depending on what style you have. The style that I have is the one that's kind of a pain in the butt, so uh, we're gonna hope for the best on that one. We have our silicone coupler, we of course have our pipe, and then we have our brackets and an extra clamp. Now, I already have the aftermarket intake installed. Something to keep in mind with this inlet pipe, it's not gonna fit the factory box, so you gotta kinda do both or find a different intake solution. Our first step is going to be removing part of our intake. We're not gonna need to take the whole thing off, but we are gonna need to take the part towards the back right where the inlet pipe is. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and get our engine cover out of the way. Next, we're gonna remove this silicone pipe right here because we are going to be replacing this with our new one that comes with our inlet. We are going to be keeping this clamp. So let's bring this up and we're gonna just leave it here on our pipe. We need to get to this one back here. This one we will be replacing with a new one. And we'll get this silicone pipe out of the way. And I think for the sake of being able to see a little bit better, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this hard metal pipe as well. Something else we may wanna consider, throw a towel over this inlet pipe. We don't want anything to fall down into our turbocharger. That'll make for a super bad day. So just take any precaution you need to on that front. We'll go ahead and remove our T30 here which wasn't actually that tight to begin with. Now you won't have to worry about this screw coming out. This is actually a captive screw in the body of the turbocharger, so it'll just stay put there. Our next step is gonna kinda depend on what style of this clamp that we have. A lot of the Mark 7s have this goofy one that I have on mine, which can be tricky to get off. Some of them have the older style with just the side clips on it. Those come off pretty easy. You just squeeze the clamps and then pull the fitting off. For this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it back towards the back of the car and wiggle the inlet pipe out. Be really careful with this. We don't wanna just yank on it. The best way I've found to get this off is to kind of wiggle and rotate your stock inlet pipe while pulling these things apart. You do gotta kinda be careful, and I really recommend don't do this when the entire engine is cold. That'll make all this plastic a little more brittle, so we maybe wanna do this with a warm-ish engine. You don't wanna do it super hot but you wanna do it with the engine warm, not ice cold. All right, here are our two inlet pipes. This is the factory one right here. You can see it next down pretty narrow, especially right here, compared to our integrated engineering one, which is a pretty big, little more even design all the way through. We also have this bracket that's gonna go right there so that we can screw that T30 in that we removed, basically replacing this. So. Replacing another piece of plastic, yet again, on this car, but just look at the difference between these two pipes. It's pretty crazy how narrow this one is versus how wide this one is. You can actually see how much more air the aftermarket one flows versus that stock piece. Next up, we are gonna take our new inlet pipe. We are gonna take the bracket that it came with, and we're gonna install our bracket. It also came with hardware for our bracket too, so that's fun. Now, because there is a little bit of movement, I'm not gonna tighten this down all the way until we have our pipe locked into place. That may mean it's kind of gonna be kind of a pain to get to these bolts, but I'd rather that than have our pipe at kind of a weird angle or weird tension. 
So I'm just gonna snug these by hand. And we'll tighten them up once we get the pipe installed all the way. There's three openings on the pipe and three tabs on the turbocharger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the pipe in to clear the tabs on the turbocharger, and then we're gonna rotate it towards the front of the car to set it in place. First, let's get our PCV hose out of the way. Go ahead and get this installed, rotate it forward. That's pretty much where we're gonna need to go. And that's gonna make tightening these bolts kind of a pain, but we're gonna do it that way anyway. We'll go ahead and snap our hose on since it's right there. Grab our T30, make sure that we can get our bracket tightened down. If you're struggling to get the bracket lined up, you may need to reach your hand back behind it and just give it a little help. Now we need to get those Allens back behind here snug. You can get to them pretty easily. Probably not necessary to leave them loose. It's just, for me, it, I feel like stuff like that usually makes it easier to do. Next, we'll go ahead and get our new silicone coupler. Wipe these out a little bit just to make sure that there's no goo in them. Put a little bit of lubricant on our fitting here. Go ahead and drop our coupler on. Get our new clamp, put it on. Go ahead and set our other clamp on. Go ahead and get our hard pipe in. Now we gotta do is tighten our clamps down, make sure we don't have any fitment issues with our air intake. Then it's time for some software. Doing our stage two software is gonna be exactly the same process as we did for stage one. The actual flash itself takes about 10 minutes or so, and we really do wanna make sure we have a battery maintainer on the car. Now it's important to note, this is actually still a beta file for integrated engineering. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flash it then we're gonna go ahead and run some logs and send it over to IE and have them check it out. That way they can make sure that everybody's happy and healthy. All right, so that's it. Our software's done, our ECM, TCM is updated. The process for running logs is pretty simple. We're just going to go into the extras function on our integrated engineering flash software. We're gonna go ahead and run some logs. And what they're looking for is a handful of things. We're looking at RPM, we're looking at wastegate duty cycle, we're looking at fuel trims, we're looking at timing. We're looking at all this information and we can actually throw it in a graph if we wanted to and graph over time, over certain runs, depending on how we do it. There's basically infinite things that you can look at in this space. This does tell a pretty big story and we wanna make sure that we're running this software flash in a very safe, and reliable manner. So I'm gonna send these files over to Integrated Engineering. Okay, so we have our software done. We need to take the car to the dyno and get our actual numbers, see what our improvements are over stock and over stage one after doing all of this work for our stage two update. But since we got a bit of a ride to the dyno, let's go ahead and drive it and have a little fun and see how she performs. Even though we do wanna make sure we get those numbers from our dyno, that doesn't always tell the whole story because there is a fun factor that doesn't necessarily every time translate to dyno numbers. I wanna make sure we're not being dumb in the rain. I can already tell you the car pulls so much harder than it did on stage one. I think stage one was an awesome upgrade, but man, the way the car pulls and that feel in it, it just feels so much better in, uh, in our, the stage two file we have on the car now. Our DSG pops don't hurt either. My initial thoughts are this. When we went from stage one to stage two, I felt like stage one was really how the car should have come from the factory, that extra torque and that extra horsepower. I'm gonna suspect that when we get to the dyno, we're not gonna see that huge increase in horsepower and torque that we did when we went from stock to stage one even though we've put all these extra parts on the car. So what does that mean? Well, then the best way I can describe this really, the difference between stage one and stage two, is stage one felt like we were still driving a stock vehicle. It felt like the R was still stock, just a little bit better throttle response, a little bit peppier of a car, a little bit more fun. Again, really the way it should have come from the factory. Now that we've moved to the stage two, the best way I can describe that is it feels like we're driving a modified car now. So what do I mean by it feels like we're driving a modified car now versus before? Well, that's actually really hard to describe. The initial flash really just sort of elevated what the car was stock, right? It pushed it a little bit harder. Now we're getting more from the vehicle. We're getting more exhaust sound. We're getting more intake sound. We're getting some of that turbo noise coming back through and we're hearing it from the intake. It's almost like the way the power's delivered now versus when it was factory. When it was factory, it was kind of smooth and it sort of stopped and then that was it, right? Your torque stopped. Now it feels like it hits that and it still just kind of keeps on going, which is 
Such a crazy feeling. All right, so we're here at the dyno. Let's go ahead, do a handful of runs, and see what we get. Now, you guys may remember I said this was a beta file. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple dyno runs. We may actually update that file in between runs. We are back. Our settled in nicely at home base. Let's talk about a handful of things and wrap this up. So we did six dyno pulls while we were at the dyno, and we actually did four different variants of our stage two tune. And as you can see on the graph, we got incrementally a little bit more power each time. We never got any huge gains, but you can see there's a couple of areas where we got some pretty significant improvement. And during each one of these runs, I did data log and sent that over to Integrated Engineering so they can monitor that and really keep improving on this software. I think that's something that we as enthusiasts don't really understand and don't really appreciate the level of work that it can take to go into making one of these files really, really reliable and a good amount of power. Next, let's look at how we did from stock to stage one and to stage two. Our red lines here for max power and max torque was when the car was 100% stock, no modifications. Our blue line is stage one plus software only. This is the high torque file for the ECM and a DSG tune. And the green line on our chart is our full stage two with the associated hard parts. So from stock to stage one, we got right about 41 horsepower and 71 pound feet of torque, which is a huge gain for simply just software. When we look at our stage two numbers, we got 28 horsepower and we actually hit right about the same torque number. Now I have to say, I was actually expecting a little bit more power, both horsepower and torque from that stage two file. And I think the big thing there is because it's so much more money than just doing the stage one tune. Now you're probably wondering how much is it gonna cost to go to stage two? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate that we're gonna pretend that we had no modifications and we're just jumping straight into stage two. If you go stage one and then stage two, the price is a little bit different, but really not that much, a couple hundred dollars maybe. Let's jump over to integrated site and see what this will cost. So we are gonna add our VW Golf R Mark 7, even though it's technically a Mark 7 and a half. We'll go ahead and start with software. We're going to do, add our power link. Stage two, of course, add to cart. We're gonna need to do our DSG software. Now, if you have a manual transmission, you don't need to do the DSG flash. However, on stage two, almost guaranteed that you're gonna need to do a clutch. So we'll add our DSG file here, our intake. Now, it looks like the one that I have on the car is sold out, so we'll have to add $320 to our final price but we will add this little inlet pipe. Next up is the charge cooler. That is probably the most expensive component <laughs> of this stage two build. We'll add that in, our exhaust. So this will be our downpipe. Make sure we get the all wheel drive version, even though it's the same price, add to cart. All right, so it looks like if we were to straight up buy these parts, not on sale or anything like that. We're looking at about $3,200, but we do need to add back in that intake. That intake was $320, so we'll call that $3,550. Now, that's straight up parts, no labor. If you're doing it yourself, which none of these are really hard jobs to do, a couple of them, really the charge cooler and the downpipe do take a bit of work and a bit of time. Of course, I did videos on step-by-step -step how to do that, so if you wanna follow that, follow that and you can do these jobs yourself. If you decide, hey, it's not worth it to me, I don't have the space, I don't have the tools, I don't really feel like doing it, totally get it. Let's look at about what labor is gonna cost. So I use the factory guide for customer pay labor times. This is totally ballpark. Shops are gonna charge what they charge. Some may charge more, some may charge less. Of course, hourly labor rate depends uh, on your location and a handful of other things, but this is roughly roughly what you're gonna be looking at. The rough time on installing the downpipe is going to be about four hours, so we can call that about 500 bucks. The charge cooler is gonna probably be about four hours as well. If you have a shop that's charging you more, say five and a half to six hours, that's most likely because they're going to recalibrate that radar that we had to remove from the car. As you saw, I didn't recalibrate mine. The car was fine, however, I will not fault a shop for saying we won't do this job without recalibrating this radar. 
because that is part of the procedure for doing it, and it does put them at a liability if they don't do it and something gets screwed up with your driver assist package, so not hating on that four to six hours roughly. In the factory repair manual, there's not a time for the turbo inlet pipe really, and there's really not a time for the air intake. I estimated those at about a half an hour a piece, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but we'll ballpark it there. Now, as far as the flash goes, I'm not sure what a shop would actually charge in straight labor. I think the way that stuff usually works is that you just pay, say, $600 for the flash, and the labor's built in for the shop. I added an hour for labor, 120 bucks or whatever, Again, that could be totally different depending on where you go, or if you buy the power link, you're gonna do it yourself anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now, this is integrated engineering price. Everything else is pretty close in price point. You may save $50 here, $60 there, but it's all gonna be pretty close. So that overall labor time estimate is about 10, 10 hours of labor, which is a pretty good amount. So you're looking at anywhere from 1,000, 1,200, probably up to 1,500 bucks straight up in labor. So where does that put us overall? That puts us pretty darn close to $5,000 when we're going full stage two from having no modifications at all. So for that five grand, we're getting a bunch of horsepower, a car that drives completely differently than it did from stock. Sounds totally different too, much louder both on the intake side and a bit louder on the exhaust side. Now you're probably wondering, Charles, is spending all that money going stage two worth it in the long run? Well, that's a very up to you type question. It's a depends kind of question. For me, I'm not quite sure yet. I wanna get some more miles on the car. I wanna make sure that all the drivability is absolutely perfect. And I wanna really experience the car for a little bit longer on that full stage two file because that is a big financial commitment, one that you're never gonna get back. This is all for pure enjoyment of your vehicle. Now, something else to consider on your stage two file is do you have a state inspection? That may play into the fact of having a downpipe that may fail state inspection. It really depends on where you are, so consider that as well. One of the great things about stage one, it is just software. If nobody's looking for it, nobody knows, and I like that a lot. Not something I have to worry about where I live, but there's a ton of places that you will have to take that into consideration. So with that, we are full stage two, bunch of horsepower, totally different driving car. I. I'm excited. I, I love this car anyway, but to have more power is always a good thing. My big question is, how long is that going to be enough power before we're looking at what the next level of modifications is? I'm scared. I don't even want to think about that, especially how much that costs. So guys, with that, I'm going to wrap it up there. Questions or comments, drop them down below. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't checked out the other Stage 2 videos, be sure to check those out. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.